Hello and welcome to one of our live chats in the series Hello America's What's Cooking. This is happening here on the ECA Facebook page every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern and is part of a series of uh, interviews and live chats with members and associations in the North and Latin American region to really find out what's happening on the ground. Thank you all for joining us today, those who are viewing live, as well as those who will be uh, watching this as a recording. Today, I'm joined by Stephanie Lynch from Explore Edmonton. Thank you, Stephanie, for joining us as a guest and welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today. I really appreciate it. Great to have you. And, and I have to give you credit for, for this whole idea of this series because when we first spoke back in January about um, Edmonton and uh, about the um, challenges you are facing as a destination and what value we could offer you as, as ECA, this was one of the ideas we came up with. And one of the challenges was that um, nobody knows where Edmonton is. So can, can you help us out and put Edmonton on the map, please? <laughs> Yes, uh, definitely, Sonia. We talked about that in our first conversation and uh, where Edmonton is. Um, so Edmonton is in Alberta, in Canada. So we are in Western Canada. Um, how I like to say it for those people that may be watching from the States, um, we're located, uh, Alberta is located just north of Montana. So uh, that will give you a bit of a reference on our geographical location there. That's great. And you are having also greetings from our audience watching. Our staunch supporter, Glenn, is saying, uh, hey, everyone, <laughs> hey, Steph, and welcome. Hi, Glenn. <laughs> and off to our first question. What's currently happening in, in your destination? I know there's tens happening at the moment. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot happening. I'd love to share with you, Sonia, today. Um, you might know we're in our third wave of the pandemic. However, um, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So our residents are you know, continuing to get their vaccinations. Um, we have a few things I wanted to share that we're focusing on. So um, our destination health and safety has just always been a very top priority for us. And definitely even now as we're pursuing our destination GVAC certification, um, we recently did a press release um, on that. Um, this. This destination accreditation will cover the whole uh, client journey. So our Edmonton International Airport will be certified. We have Trax Coach Lines, a transportation company that uh, was involved with our NHL bubble and the World Juniors. So they have a, a great uh, health and safety track record. So they're on board. Um, both of our con convention centers, the Expo and the Edmonton Convention Center have already been certified along with uh, 38 of our hotels are in the process of getting their certification. And just very recently, our arena, Rogers Place, uh, where our Oilers hockey team plays, where we host concerts, um, they, are, they have achieved their accreditation. So when all of these um, various uh, companies become certified, um, over the next few weeks, um, we will be able to achieve that uh, destination GVAC certification, um, which will be the first in Canada. That is that is excellent news and a, and a great introduction already to some of the topics we will be covering during our Canada Summit um, later this summer on the 24th of August because when we did speak to, to a lot of our members and associations in North America and, and try to uh, take stock of what is at the top of their mind, they did say, we need to see what is the new environment for meetings, so what are the safety protocols. So I'm hoping you will be able to share by that time also a little bit more about that a GBAC certification. Uh, and we do have a question on that. How long is the process of the certification? Um, it really depends on how like, big your facility is. Um, there's a lot of different, different factors um, that play in that. Um, but it could take maybe up to eight weeks, um, eight to 12 weeks. It just depends how long 
and your commitment to um, going through uh, that process. So from the time you, you want to do it, you submit your application um, and then you, uh, you get approved. So, um, you know, like our airport um, would take a, a lot longer. There's so many different areas there um, to be focused on, you know, compared to um, a smaller property like a hotel, so. So are there any other um, new things happening? And, and Glenn actually wants to know, do you have any new tourism products in the works? Um, we do have um, Fort Edmonton Park, um, which is a live history uh, park uh, with uh, that is opening their Indigenous Peoples experience. So we're really excited about that. That's happening in July. And uh, our city has a real focus on our Indigenous community. Um, so really uh, proud to uh, announce that uh, opening soon. That's ex excellent. And it really goes hand in hand with what Glenn was already saying uh, about your city uh, in the comments, that it's a vibrant uh, sports festival and culture hub. So he, he thinks everybody <laughs> should know where Edmonton is. Thanks, Glenn. For Glenn's such a great advocate of our city. I know, I know. That's that's awesome. Um, I believe you also uh, have joined the Hybrid City Alliance. Is that correct? Yes, we we have. Um, really, really excited about uh, becoming a member and, and that partnership. Uh, so us, um, along with Sydney, Antwerp, uh, Ottawa, Prague, uh, Keynes, Geneva, Lausanne, Zurich, Bern, Durban, Seoul, and The Hague. Um, are all part of this alliance. So um, excited to, to share that there's going to be a white paper released um, any day now. Um, and you can take a look at the Hybrid City Alliance uh, website. There's a really easy uh, three-step process that's outlined there on how you would uh, go ahead to submit your RFP for that. And, and that's a great uh, segue into our next question. Um, we, we've already touched on the RFP. So what are some of the years you have been working on already? In, in Any meetings coming up for this year still? Um, well, this year there's some hope uh, in the fall still. Um, I know there's some of our clients are just waiting for uh, restrictions to be released so that they can go to fully, you know, go to in-person meetings in the fall. So we're just holding on as uh, we progress through um, re relaxing our restrictions, hopefully by the summertime. Um, but we we do currently, we're currently working on uh, future bids really for every future year, you know, 2022, 23, 24, really up to um, 2027. So so that is exciting. Um, our team is, uh, is busy on uh, future prospects and, Definitely excited to uh, be able to welcome people back into our city just as soon as uh, it's really safe to do so. And there is really uh, so much positivity during our live chats and it just shows there is light at the end of the tunnel. You seem to yes. have a lot of uh, ambassadors for Edmonton in, in the audience. I see Claire Smith said that her last trip before COVID was Edmonton. <laughs> Oh, yay. <laughs> That's a great uh, last memory before we went into all of this. <laughs> At so, least I think so. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges uh, you've encountered uh, now with putting together those bids, especially those um, far out in 27? Yeah, I think, you know, Sonia, there's just so many unknowns right now that we have to uh, work through and, and just have those really open, honest conversations with our clients. Um, you know, there's a lot of flexibility that we need to have on contracts um, and just finding that balance between, you know, that risk that the event or not organizer is willing to take and really the risk that the hotel is going to take. Um, there's also not really a baseline for event in-person attendance numbers moving forward. So, you know, our event planners really are going to struggle just to predict, you know, how many delegates are going to become, you know, they're going to come in person, you know, versus hybrid versus virtual numbers. So, you know, taking a look at, um, at that, even just how associations put together their RFP. 
um, will be very different. I'm, I'm sure as they go into a, a hybrid model, they're going to have to update and change their their bid guidelines. And, and you know, there's, um, there's so many unknowns, like what exactly is that conference going to look like next year? You know, will they require to hold uh, more space? Um, and also just kind of that international perspective is just um, the having the resource commitment right now, you know, from financial to staffing um, for the for some of those future large, you know, international opportunities. So that shared risk is is probably key in in for you would say as a tip for all um uh, suppliers as well as meeting planners coming up um, to really look at the collaboration and, and, and try and split that uh, risk a little bit because and, of all that unknown, right? And know that every conversation is different. Every conference is different and we're open to having all of those conversations and, and really working through that, those different scenarios with you and uh, helping you make a plan to to make your event a success. So we really uh, want to be true partners with our clients, you know, now more than ever, of course, that's always been our commitment, but I think, you know, everyone has to collaborate and uh, work on achieving your objectives for your conference to achieve that uh, successful event at the end of the day. And what you're saying definitely resonates with our audience mm -hmm. here says we are all going to have to balance risk with a new lens of collaboration. So um, I, I, I see we are all on the same page and, and hopefully we'll, everybody will be flexible enough to really adopt to this new collaborative effort. Um, so what have you changed in the digital digital marketing marketing sphere or in in your business model to adapt to this uncertainty and and risk um, you know i think you you know it's really you have to be grateful for this time that we have to be able to look at and different um processes that you have in place and, and revamp them so we're really in the process and really exciting um, to relaunch our ambassador program. So we are completely taking it down from the from the start and then building it back up again. So really excited about that, um, working through that project. Um, we're also, each of our team members, our business development uh, account managers have gone to more of an economic uh, sector approach based on those top industry sectors that we have in Edmonton. So each one is focusing on a sector. So that's different than a geographical approach our team has focused on um, in the past. Um, also wanna have a shout out to our Edmonton All In LinkedIn channel. We're really trying to grow that. So if you can go on to LinkedIn and follow us, uh, we'd really appreciate that um, as that's how our method to tell you all about our city. Um, our website, uh, we are revamping that. So that's another project. Um, and we've, you know, been working on international bids, you know, prior to COVID, but just keeping that momentum going to strengthen um, our awareness of Edmonton, you know, for the future. We also really know that um, our local regional markets will be coming back first. So we have a real focus on keeping engaged with that local um, regional market as well. So are you uh, forging more relationships with that local market based on, on those subjects and topics you are more focusing now on? Yeah, so in, in a lot of um, different ways, we're engaging with a lot of potential ambassadors um, in all of those various sectors to see how we can elevate you know, their research and, and the work that they're doing in our city. And then we're also um, being very involved with our local industry organizations like PCMA and MPI and of course ICA. Um, and I feel like I've missed one. Oh, CSAE, all of those local industry chapters to really show, you know, we are a partner with you um, when you host your next event in Edmonton. And we want to show you that partnership and that it's a, it is a two-way relationship. So we we are working on on those aspects and i love uh, the um, uh, keyword which um, monica is using you really 
using this time to reconstruct yeah. your industry, which is really um, a, a great way to, to formulate that. And before we finish off, here comes my favorite part. What is something you want uh, our uh, viewers to remember you and Edmonton by, something unique? Well, there's a few things, if you don't mind if I share, Senya. Um, a couple of takeaways, we really, our city has a real focus on sustainability um, and Indigenous and just wanted to share um, in that sustainability forefront, our airport, you know, the Edmonton International Airport uh, has recently announced that they've become the first airport in the world uh, to join the Climate Pledge. So that means it's committed to become carbon neutral uh, by 2040. So that announcement just came out, really excited to share that with everyone. Um, also, um, for those who may not know, we have a river valley, amazing river valley that goes right through our city. Um, it's twice the size of Central Park, 160 kilometers of trail of urban wilderness. Um, so great big open spaces when you're, you're looking at planning your next event. And lastly, we talked about Indigenous um, very briefly, but it's and we're the second largest um, Indigenous population here in Edmonton and, and Canada. Um, and there's lots of really great opportunities that we can connect our conferences um, to that uh, culture. So there's the ability to host an elder um, or a knowledge keeper at your conference. We can help you with smudging or um, a land acknowledgement. Uh, maybe there's entertainment, uh, Indigenous entertainment you might like to add to your conference. So we really have a strong partnership um, with our Indigenous entrepreneurs. And uh, through the pandemic as well, we also signed an MOU with um, Indigenous Tourism Alberta. So that even strengthens that uh, Indigenous partnership um, and commitment and to, their, to our community as well. So, yeah. And that is like the fantastic way to, to finish off our conversation. And anybody who wasn't already your ambassador, I see Monica is saying she, her bags are packed and she's ready to go as soon as borders are open. <laughs> We'd love to have you, Monica. <laughs> of meetings and really connecting to the local community is is so important for the future of events and you have really embraced that really embracing your uh destinations dna and making it part of your uh offering is so valuable thank you stephanie for joining us today it was a pleasure to have you as a guest um, we only have uh, a few more moments left to announce who will be uh, our guest next week. It will be Arnaldo Nardone from Latin America, from Uruguay, and um, oh, our trade show organizer, Fiexpo. So if you um, want to ensure to uh, hear him speak and share his experiences, make sure to come um, next week, uh, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern to the ECA World uh, Facebook page. And if you are interested to join one of our live chats, please feel free to email me at xenia.p at ecaworld.org. Thank you again, Stephanie, and thank you everybody for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.